segment, I'm really pleased to bring you something that we haven't shown up here yet. It's Devil's Third, a new game that Valhalla is developing exclusively for the Wii U. And to get us started, we've actually got a trailer to show you, so we'll kick it over there before we start chatting. Uh, stay tuned. Should be coming up very shortly. Ah, so it's there. Comment on the update. Are you blind to the suffering? I know you like the lights on, but I move so much better in the dark. Curse for a hundred years! Kumana was right. Are you blind to the suffering? Were they terrorists? Well, with that trailer to get us started, uh, I'm very pleased to introduce our guest from Valhalla. Uh, so introduce and then we'll get started. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Yoshifuru Okamoto, and I'm a producer with Valhalla Game Studios. And we're extremely happy to finally be able to introduce everyone to Devil's Third. And I want to say really big thank you to all of the fans who've waited so long for this title. There are three things that we wanted to accomplish with Devil's Third. The first was a breakthrough in the shooter genre. We spent a lot of years making fighting games and uh, and action games, but this time we wanted to challenge ourselves to make a shooter. So we spent a lot of years researching modern shooters and creating a shooter engine that we could then add melee action to, layering on different adaptations using our know-how in the action genre. The second one is to try to experience the multiplayer game. Another thing we wanted to accomplish was a breakthrough in multiplayer to create experience that no one has ever had before. So we've added a lot of elements to multiplayer that are an amazing challenge for us, but we think we've really done it. And all along the way, Nintendo supported our vision and worked with us to realize each of those elements. What we really wanted to accomplish with this multiplayer was not just the sense of killing an enemy and moving on and killing the next, but rather a sense of enjoyment in every single moment, even if it's you who are the one being killed. 
そう倒したら嬉しいし倒されたら悔しいっていう感情をですねマルチにも盛り込みたいなって思ってます。And so having lots of different enemy takedowns, different ways to be killed makes it fun even if you're the one on the wrong end. <笑>で三つ目はゲームの王様であるニンテンドーとバルハラとでゲームのブレイクスルーを起こしたいと思ってます。And the third thing that we wanted to accomplish was creating a breakthrough game in this partnership with Nintendo. There are probably some people who are really surprised by this pairing of Valhalla and Nintendo. But I think both of us having different ideas and bringing them together in that kind of conflict has created some really interesting and unique new concepts. And it's really fun to me to challenge myself to work with Nintendo in this way. And now that Devil's Third is nearing completion. So please continue to support us and send in all your messages. We、really、enjoy those as we get close to completion. で先ほど二つ目マルチプレイのブ,ルブレイクスルーと言いましたが、まあ日本のことわざにあの百分は一見にしかずというのがあるんですけれども、あの実際にマルチのトレーラーの方あの見ていただきたいなと思っています。And earlier I said that we're aiming for a breakthrough in multiplayer, but rather than telling you about it, I think we should probably show you because the picture is worth a thousand words and a video even more. So let's roll that trailer. Thank、you
あの、<笑> So yeah, I think there's probably some really surprising elements and a few things that people might be anticipating based on the trailer they ju they just saw. And more than anything, they might be thinking, what exactly did I just see? <laughs> but I'd like to take this opportunity to explain some of the multiplayer a little bit more. That sounds excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Multiplayer no hanashi o. Okay, so do we have something to run for that? I think we might do. The slides, I believe. Oh, excellent. See if the guys out back can get those sorted up for us. And uh, I did notice also during that trailer, the customization looks like a lot of fun too, because I saw there was like base creation going on there. Yes, customization is a really important part of gameplay in Devil's Third. You can customize your own map when your fortress and even put a Japanese castle up on it if you want. Nice. Yeah, it looks like our slides are up. So now let's give a little bit of explanation of the multiplayer using these slides. So next slide, please. Hi. 今回の舞台はですね、あの、ケスラーシンドロームが起こった、そういった災害の中でも、まあ、北米を舞台に、あの、繰り広げられます。So the setting for this game is the North American continent after the Kessler syndrome has occurred, which is where one satellite breaks up and creates a debris field that sweeps across the orbit taking out other satellites. はい、次お願いします。Hi, next slide, that's pretty please. scary considering that's a, a theory based on what could yeah, actually happen to us. Sure. Yeah, first of all, let's choose one area in the 13 area. We chose Texas. So let's take a look at one of the areas of the warring factions after this catastrophe. We're going to take a look at Texas here. Now, as a player, you might want to choose uh, one of these areas that you happen to live in. はい、お願いします。So you're going to start out as a citizen here. はい、お願いします。はい。で、その市民の状態でですね、あの、now I said you're going to start out as a citizen, but you're going to be able to level up in various different match types with a lot of different rule sets. You might have seen in the trailer there was the chickens or the one with the fruit is carnival here. Next slide, please. Hi. で、経験を積んでいくとですね、レベルが上がって、えっと、クランをですね、作ったり、クランに入ることができます。and as you level up, you'll also be able to create a clan or join a clan. はい、次お願いします。This is our main menu for multiplayer, and you might see in the middle there, there's a screen that says Hatties. And that's a place where you're going to be able to test fire new guns as well as check out a lot of the uh, costume customization options. Next slide, please. Customize pattern a lot of different things. Uh, and we're going to have lots and lots of customization options. I'm not sure if I have an exact number, but many dozens. 
、まあ、クールなコスチュームから<笑>あのなんか右下にあるような段ボール男ですとかあの右上の猫戦士みたいなことになることもできます。インクルーディングスムリーアンユージュアルワンズ、like you'll see the cardboard man on the bottom right <笑> and then the cat warrior on、like、the upper、that. right。If I'm taking down enemies, I want the last thing they see to be this fuzzy little kitten face。え、タルサル敵が最後に見るのは<笑>その猫の。でもね、これね、どんどんたくさん入れていくと、任天堂が喜んでくれるんですよ。Yeah, we found that the more customization options we added, the happier Nintendo was, so we just kept going and going, creating a bunch. <laughs> I'm totally going to start a cat face ninja clan. It's going to be epic. Next slide, please. 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 And you can see here, these are the 13 areas that the continent has been subdivided into when these warring factions have been to, began to divide up territory.、Yeah. Next slide, please. でですね、えっと、地域を選んだ後に、まあ、それぞれクラインが自分のそのフォートレスをカスタマイズしていくことができるんですね。これは、えっと、クラン同士の戦いの時に使うものです。Now, once you've chosen an area, you'll be able to customize your fortress, choosing from among the buildings that you might see here. And when you're playing multiplayer matches, these are the maps that you're going to use. You're actually going to be invading other people's areas. Now, that Japanese castle on the right is particularly difficult to get a hold of. But as you can tell from the trailer, there's always the possibility that could be, it could be destroyed in an instant.、ね、so that'll be a little upsetting, I think. Just a little bit. So you kid I like, oh, the Marchi and Dondo, you're tied up. So you kid I like, oh, the Marchi play, you are, that's some more you're coming to. So we wanted to include lots of elements like that, kind of balancing out risk and reward and giving people a real sense of consequences. カスタマイズっていうのは各地域ごとにあのいろんな特色がありますんで、あの非常に熱中できると思います。Mm. And I think people are really going to get into customizing their fortresses because there are going to be options that are available depending on which area you chose. で自分だけのあのフォートレスを作って楽しんでください。Mm. So I hope everyone enjoys making something that feels very personal to them.、はい、次お願いします。Next slide, please. はい。で実際の戦争はまあ攻撃側とあの防御側に分かれまして、でそれ以外にあのもうクランとか入るの面倒くさいよっていう人はまあ一匹狼で、mm. あの傭兵として参加することもできます。Now you're going to be playing as、uh, the side that's either attacking the offense side or the defense side, but if you're more of a lone wolf and you're not someone to join a clan, you can just use the free entry option.、Yeah. 次お願いします。Next slide, please.、Yeah. で先ほどあの。エモーション、喜怒哀楽をこのゲームに盛り込みたいと言いましたが、戦争の最中に相手陣地にですね、mm-hmm. あのビラを撒くことができます。Mm-hmm. Now you're also going to rely on propaganda to recruit people to your clan because this is an ongoing dynamic war effort after all. You need to keep up your numbers. 自分のクランが戦争で負けそうな時に、あのセイグッバイとかあの左上のチキンのあのビラが落ちてきたら。<laughs> and sometimes you're going to be ra- hazed a little bit by the game. Like if you are starting to lose a match and your opponent started dropping chicken flyers on you, like the one you see in the <laughs> upper left, that would probably be a little upsetting, right? <laughs>、yeah. I think it's a really interesting kind of survivalist angle that we've got here where. The survivor guy, each. まあ。だお気に入りのあの日本の城にビラがこうばらまかれるわけですよね。Uh, and so you might decide that once you destroy their really expensive Japanese castle, that's the time. That, that、yeah. feels like it would be right. It would be fitting.、Yeah. それは正解ですよね。<笑>正解。<笑>まあマルチの簡単な説明になりますが、あの以上になります。はい。はい、so yeah, there's lots of interesting uses for these kind of propaganda flyers.、はい、で私たちデビルズさ、あこれもうスラグの方は大丈夫ですか、ね uh, ？Next slide, please.、はい Oh, we'll get there in a second. Just need the next slide up. Hi. Oh, oh that's it. There we go. Okay. Okay. 
で私たちはあのずっとまあ格闘ゲームとあのアクションゲームを作ってきましたが今回は全く新しいシューターを作り上げます。うん So, we've spent a lot of years making action games and fighting games, but we decided to challenge ourselves this time with a shooter. Yeah. I'm the boss of Itagaki no Shiki no Moto. For 20 years, I've been working with my boss, Mr. Itagaki. And I've spent 20 years making games with my boss, Mr. Itagaki. Yeah, I've got to admit, it's, it's a shame that Itagaki san couldn't be here to join us today. I'm not going to be here to join us today. So, this is a shame that Itagaki san couldn't be here to join us today. あの事件が起きたので、板垣の方は一足先にあの帰りました。Yeah, it's too bad. I'm afraid something came up with development and he had to get back to Tokyo very quickly. Oh, gotcha. Well, since he's not here, I can ask this.、Um, what's it like working with Itagaki-san? あ彼はいないですから、ちょっと聞いてみたいと思いますが、はい、彼と仕事するのは、yeah. まあ、どんな感じでしょうかえっと、やっぱり板垣は非常にプロフェッショナルなんで、えっと、やっぱり僕らもプロの仕事で返さないといけないなという緊張感がね、うん、あのその戦場にはあります。うん。He's very professional and very demanding. He certainly will ask us to do things many times over if he doesn't feel like he's got it exactly right. ただ、僕は毎晩あの彼と一緒に飲みに行くんですけど、お酒が入ると非常に優しくて、あのユーモラスになります。うん But I also go drinking with him every night, and once he's had a few, he's a normal, friendly guy. So, the gap is that I've had 20 years to see that And I've had 20 years to see that contrast, so I think I've gotten to know him really well. <laughs> that's really cool. It's great that you guys have been able to work together for so long. And I mean, that's a really well for projects, and now. Getting to work on something like this, it's really different from what you guys have worked on before. So, now I'm going to go to the show. 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 I'm going to go to あと僕らはもう本当家族みたいなもんで、うん、あの板垣にも僕の結婚式のあのナコードとかもやってもらってますんで、あの本当に会社っていうよりかはあの家族でもの作ってるような感じですね。で今回任天堂さんとも一緒の家族になれたかなと思ってます。うん、yeah, we are certainly very very busy, but it's not all work. In fact, Mr. Itagaki was kind enough to step in and help organize parts of my wedding even. So, I have to say that it's not just a workplace. We do feel like family. And now that we've been able to work with Nintendo, we feel like we're part of their family as well. It's very nice to have you. Ah, k e t o Yokata, this name. So, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 So, we've seen two trailers today, but just to prove to everybody that what you see is not fake, we're going to jump into some live gameplay, if that's all right. Yes, that's great. Yeah. Hi. で実際に皆さんの前であのこうやってプレイできることをすごい興奮してるとともにあの若干緊張してますんであの敵に何度か殺されると思うんですけど、うん、ご容赦ください、うん、Now I'm very excited and just a little bit nervous to be playing in front of people today so there's the chance I might die a few times I hope everyone understands Oh no worries you would not be the first person to、uh, die on their game up here so it's all good <笑>それは初めてじゃないですので、まあ、みんな殺されてますので大丈夫です<笑>そうですね<笑>ただね、板垣から死んだらお前を殺すって言われてるんで。<笑> But I've been told that、uh, Mr. Itagaki has some consequences planned for me if I die too much, so I gotta be careful. Oh, ouch! He's got the stream running at home. That's、yeah. good news. <笑>、うん、自宅で寝てますね。Oh, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed for you. <笑>では祈ってます。そうですね。そういう緊張感を持って、あのこのゲームの主人公のアイバンを動かしてみたいと思います。<笑> so I'm gonna try and keep that in mind as I start up here. Oh no worries. So Scott, I did want to ask you,、um, so、as we're、uh, getting loaded up here,、um, one thing that I know that we've talked about in the office a fair bit.、Oh, so we're going to jump in a solo player here. Uh, and we've been, we have two stages that are available for play, but we've been showing Panama quite a bit, so we want to be a little bit exclusive and jump into Yoshiwara, which is more of a Japan feeling stage for、nice. this demo. Here we go.
Actually, yeah, what I was uh, thinking there was just, um, I know we've talked a fair bit at the office about the, the sort of cultural the bits and pieces that are hidden here area. that folks might not necessarily recognize right off the top of the bat. I'd say that's yeah, a I think that there's been a lot that's come from the co collaboration of Valhalla Game Studios and Nintendo. And one of those was the influence of Mr. Yamagami at Nintendo, who has been talking to Mr. Tagaki saying that, you know, don't be conservative, just go for the glory, do everything you can with this game. And in particular, try to make it feel very much like an Itagaki game and try and give it a bit of Japanese flavor and feel. And so as such, you can see a lot of that Japanese feel come out, both in the setting that we're about to explore here, as well as in the design of the main character, for example. Uh, now here we're getting a little bit of backstory. You see the main character there leaning down and meeting a young girl who in the present day is a sniper and is on the opposing side. Uh, but you'll also notice that the main character has some sort of tattoos all over his body. Those are actually Sanskrit characters of Buddhist scripture. And this is a reference to a really old Japanese ghost story. Which is like one of the most brutal ghost stories I think I've heard. Yeah, it's, it's a rough. super cool story. Mm. So yeah, as you see, like most of his body is covered except a couple of parts on his head. Uh, and it's a reference to Miminashi Hoichi, which is a, a ghost story where a wandering Buddhist monk named Hoichi uh, comes upon a village where there's a temple that was haunted and he offers to exorcise the ghosts from this temple but everyone warns him that the ghosts are violent so he has uh, them draw this Buddhist scripture all over his body to protect him from the spirits but they forget to write on his ears and so through the night as he's chanting and trying to exorcise these spirits they tear his ears off uh, because every other part of, his, of him is invulnerable and so from that point he became known as Earless Hoichi. And that's, uh, that's the reference, that's the inspiration for this character design here. I think that's so cool, like all those, those little background details were, I, mean, I remember the first time I saw this, I had no idea that that context was there. Yeah, I think they've done a lot to try and include a lot of that sort of like Japanese taste and feel in the game. You can certainly see it in the architecture here. We still have got enough folks like you in the office who so can actually explain this to me. <laughs> Now, that's not the only thing going on, though. They've also received a lot of influence from, I would say, Hollywood, you know, working with former members at THQ like Danny Bilson. They've come up with a, a massive scale story, something that you would expect to see in a movies, and try to incorporate that into uh, a shooter that also has melee action as well, trying to create a bit of a hybrid. So you've got the sort of Japanese and Hollywood hybrid at the same time that you have this melee action and shooter hybrid happening as well. There was something really cool about one of the songs that was Whoa. playing in the trailer as well. So I remember we talked about that mm, back yeah. as well. So this is not the trailer that we showed here today, but I think people might have had a chance to see it earlier in the week. Uh, they hired some of the top musicians in Japan to play the shamisen, the koto, the shakuhachi, and the Japanese taiko drums, uh, as well as sing. And the, the lyrics in the song refer to uh, a famous battle in the Heike Monogatari, the story of the Heike where the Heike clan was defeated and killed at uh, an area called Dan no Ura. Uh, and it's, it's a really sad song, but also haunting, because there is a, a true ghost story about these fallen oh, soldiers. Bats, bats, bats. Yeah, you can even get killed by bats in this game. Uh, so if anybody has a chance to watch that trailer, I'd really recommend it. The music sounds wonderful. Isn't it like so many people died that there's like crabs that look like they have people's faces oh, yes. on their shells? At the Oh, it's cool, but it's really creepy. So this battle took place in what is now modern-day Shimonoseki in Japan. The fallen warriors that end up in the water uh, were said to have been reincarnated in the form of crabs because the fishermen for so many years threw back any crabs they found that had a human face on them, uh, believing them to be haunted. But that created a kind of artificial selection genetically for this face pattern on these crabs. So here you can see uh, Ivan, the main character, is trying to press into the enemy fortress. Uh, surrounded by a lot of enemies. He just threw the sword there. That's going to be a really important part of gameplay, is thinking about the distance to your enemy. Do you want to shoot them from a distance, or do you want to slide up while shooting, slide up to close the distance and use melee to finish them off, or throw a weapon? And this game certainly does give you a lot of options. There's also brutal takedowns. Yeah. Lots of different patterns in the animation. I love that you can just swipe weapons off your enemies too. Just like, whoop, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really cool move. When you steal a sword from an enemy and kill them with their own sword, it's got to be a bit insulting. Oh, yeah. I can definitely so, really see the, the influence here in this area's design as well. It looks really classic. Yeah, Yoshiwara itself is a reference to a famous pleasure district. 
You can see the red lanterns there. So as we're advancing through these objectives, you're getting ever further deeper into the enemy fortress. And you can see some of those propaganda posters that we saw on the slide earlier are put up on the walls here as well. So another thing that the game asks you to do is you're going to be faced with a, a series of interesting decisions moment to moment uh, about the physical nature of each map. You know, there's not only the distance to an enemy, there's also whether you're behind cover or not, you would certainly choose to use a ranged weapon then. But there's verticality as well to the maps. And so you're going to be able to perform takedowns from a great height dropping onto an enemy with a melee weapon. I have a feeling we might see that in a second here. Yeah. Ah. Mm. So here we thought we were being ambushed, turned around and said, is that a cat? And suddenly, enemies drop in. Ninjas! Yes. So Laser yeah. Ride ninjas. Yeah, ninja combat is definitely one of the elements that you're going to find here. Man, now, this guy looks so cool. I've been watching Mr. Okamoto play this game all week, and one of the reasons I'm doing the talking right now is if he has to talk during this part, he will certainly be killed. Oh, he's not the only one. <laughs> yeah. We found out a lot of us have a real hard time talking and playing. But there is a, an interesting element of interacting with the environment as well. Uh, you're going to be doing some running and jumping up walls and trying to find different vantage points. Like I said, that verticality and the stage design can be really helpful if you get the drop on an enemy. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, That's the brutal. sword take and kill. Oh. Oh, and no. right after that, he gets killed. <laughs> no worries. Ended <laughs> up on my note there. <laughs> also, uh, I'm afraid that's it, everyone. <laughs> Mr. Itagaki is definitely going to have my head now. Oh, no. <laughs> you lasted a good long while there while we were talking, though. We saw the cool like, sword stuff. And <laughs> 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 yeah, like I said, you can shoot, you can attack people with a sword, or you can throw the sword from a distance as well for a takedown. So it looks like we're going with the hammer this time. And uh, I hope you're all praying for Mr. Okamoto's success, as yes. am I. I do not want him to get in trouble at work. Uh, okay, so it looks like he's going to try and throw it at that guy this time. <laughs> uh, I was yeah. supposed to see across this guy there. Is that a cat? No. Yeah, that aurora effect you see in the back is the residual effect of the EMP from the satellites that were destroyed creating the Kessler syndrome. They each had like a, a fuel cell that created a nuclear effect, thus taking out the world's electrical grid. That's why the, the world has fallen into such disarray with warring factions. People can't even use uh, modern weaponry except for the enemies who are able to shield themselves from the effect ahead of time. It's kind of scary that that's something that really could happen. There's just so much space debris in our orbit. But at some point, things are going to start crashing together, and if enough things crash together, you could lose all of that jazz. Yeah, I think that's something to certainly keep in mind, and it's an effect you saw in the movie Gravity as well, and that definitely gave you a sense of like how real it could be. It's creepy. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it only happens in this game. Yeah. And <laughs> for us out here. But uh, these guys have oh, imagined... Uh, these guys have imagined a really detailed world, thinking about exactly what would happen geopolitically if such a collapse were to occur. Yeah, like, it's really interesting, especially looking at the multiplayer, and it really is every man for himself. You know, you're gonna, yeah. Are you going to join a group and try to survive that way? Are you going to try to go solo and just kind of make the best of your situation and hop in and out of other areas? But uh, I could see it really interesting seeing how the power shifts from region to region, because this is going to be persistent. And you're going to get to see if one area is just doing really, really well and really strong. And that's going to be a big part of the multiplayer. You have a lot of different levels at which you're going to need to think about gameplay. There's not just the individual combat where you're hitting an enemy right in front of you. But there's also tactics at the squad level. And oh, also, nice. And also strategy <laughs> at the clan level as you coordinate with oh, so many people. Man, I get oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he had a really nice sword throw kill and yeah. then got attacked from behind. <laughs> I don't think Itagaki-san can get mad at you for dying with all these cool sword throws. I feel like that kind of makes up for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he was the one who told me to throw the sword so much, so I'm pretty sure I knew what he wanted. 
じゃあ、えっと、ここの猫は一掃しましたんであのゲームプレイの方はここまでにしましょう<笑> Yeah, since I heard you're really excited about those cat costumes I hope you're really looking forward to this game but I think that's about all the time we have left for gameplay そろそろですねそうですねはい、はい Oh, no worries at all.、Um, are there any final thoughts that you'd like to leave us with as we wrap up and head to the next segment? The final comment is that I'm going to go to the next segment. 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 Yeah, just one more time, I'd like to say thank you so much to all of the fans who waited for this game for so long. そして僕たちのチャレンジをあのしっかりサポートしてくれている任天堂に感謝申し上げたいです。そしてこのこんな素晴らしい発表の場を設けてくれて嬉しいです。Also want to send my deepest thanks to Nintendo for understanding and supporting our vision and for giving this this wonderful opportunity to announce the game。それから板垣をはじめとしてあの東京で昼夜問わずあの働いてくれているスタッフにもあの感謝をしたいと思います。ありがとう。And my personal thanks to Mr. Itagaki and all of our staff who are so hard at work at Valhalla Game Studios in Tokyo. Thank you. I hope to be able to make more announcements soon. And we're going to work as hard as we can on making this game as cool as possible. So I hope you're looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you.、Yeah. Is there a final trailer we wanted to wrap up with, or are we heading off? Oh, that's it. Thanks. We're good. Oh, excellent.